Welcome to our show. Come out, step into the light. I'm Ming Tuan. And I'm Alushka. Do you see it is so hot? Like right here. Right here. I, I, I don't feel hot. I think there's something going on in your mind at the moment. Yeah, because our guest today is a guy that really hot. That's why. <laughs> Ooh. Well, uh, can we bring our guest out? Welcome our guest today. Hey, hi. Can you introduce something about yourself? Yes, so my name is Petri and I come from Finland. Recently moved here. I'm 36 years old. Wow. So thank you for having me here. 36? 36 years old, oh. yes. I just turned uh, two weeks ago, yeah. Because you, you look so younger. young, yeah. Like in your 20s, younger. Oh, really? <laughs> well, thank you. I want to know what skin products do you use? <laughs> I'll give you my doctor's number later. <laughs> like, uh, how long have you been here in Vietnam? It's been like almost exactly a month now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did you come to Vietnam? Well, it was actually very sudden and not planned at all. Uh, last spring, my former employer, he has a company here. Oh. And he just texted me like, we might need someone like you here. We're, uh, like, uh, we're making the Vietnamese branch bigger and we need someone who can also talk to the Finnish people and everything. So I was like, hmm, Vietnam, really? I had no idea about the place. I've never been here before, but it sounded like such an adventure. So I just, I just wanted to take the chance and here I am. I really like your accent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Have you heard the Finnish accent before? No. But I, I can see that you like all the things about him. That's not me, that's you! You! You just said that he's hot! <laughs> he was bloody! Oh, I'm so flattered, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of business are you doing in Vietnam? Well, uh, the company I'm working for is a Finnish company to do with consulting, uh, mostly like chemical consulting, do, uh, doing some like uh, export and import. I'm there for administrative work mostly, yeah. So it's exciting and very international, so yeah. Does that mean you're going to be living here for a long time? I think so, yeah. There's no plan, like, for how long. So I'm hoping for a long time because I really like it so far. And yeah, no plans yet. So I think I'm going to be here for a while. So you stay here for one month. Uh, yes. What have you experienced here? Well, I feel like I haven't really seen a lot yet. I've only been to Saigon so far and working a lot because I'm getting used to my new job. And it's such a big place, even just the city. So there's so much to explore, but yeah. District 1, um, I live in District 2, so I kind of go between those. But I think there's so much more to see. I'm very excited. So, did you make friends with some guy in uh, Ho Chi Minh City? Yeah, actually yes, because my colleagues have been here for a little over a year, so they know some people, so I've gotten to know some local people and some other expats also, and I've made friends already and it seems, it seems so nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any hot, loving friends? Well, you know, <laughs> there are some guys, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the dating seems very vibrant, so, mm. yeah, there may be something going on, but... Hey, this is exciting. Yeah, a lot of options anyway. <laughs> For you, yes, because you're such a handsome man. Thank you. And uh, which thing do you like the most here? Like food or...? Well, actually food was one of the most anticipated things here when I came because I'm a foodie mm -hmm. and I love Asian food. Vietnamese uh, cuisine was a new thing for me. So when I came here, I was like, oh my God, the food is so good. I'm gonna stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was like the number one thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. But any, everything else also. Which uh, kind of food do, do you like? Like pho or gom tam? For example, yes. Yeah, I love pho. I usually eat it for like lunch or something. That's one of the best things here. But anything, we just go into like a Vietnamese restaurant and we order the table full. I don't ah, even yeah. know what I'm eating half the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, this is so good. <laughs> Bring me more. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So get, get back to your childhood, when you realize that you are different from the other boys? I think as long as I can remember, I have kind of knew that there's something different, but it's hard to put into words, you don't know the terms, you don't actually even know what it is when you're very young, so 
I think around when I went to school, like maybe seven, eight years old, I started to maybe realize something. The boyish stuff seemed to be like hard for me, sports and being like, mm -hmm. like very macho and stuff like that. It's like, no, no, let's play here with the girls. <laughs> I think that sometimes it's easier to identify when you feel a bit different and you feel like, okay, this is what the girls are doing. It somehow feels more natural to me, even though I know I'm a boy and that's who I am. But yeah, I think in elementary school, I started to feel different, yeah. Did it give you any difficulties? Yeah. Not at first. I think my childhood was very happy. I think it was more when I was in junior high and I started to realize more, like maybe I'm gay or I knew, knew, knew these things out there that some people feel attracted to the same sex and, and then you're like, no, I don't want to be and uh, then you all have all these feelings. I think at the time it started to be more difficult because you can see that people are more prejudiced and the other kids can be very mean and there's mm -hmm. some bullying, so. There were like inner battles happening inside yes. of you. Yes, and it's not helping when you see that it's not okay for like the other kids and there was some bullying. I'm, I'm from a small town so when I was younger, I think it was like we were much more in the spotlight then, mm -hmm. and much more bullying in that sense. And there wasn't anyone saying that this is okay and you might, might be like this. And yeah, I, I, I really struggled with that when I was younger. Yes. Did your mom and dad see something different about you? Yeah, well, time? my family, um, I think they kind of knew from very young age because mm -hmm. I was very different and I have I have uh, two older brothers so I was very different from them mm -hmm. and they were into sports and they were like uh, much more boyish in a way and I was much more sensitive and especially my mom she always knew but we didn't talk about it a lot and I didn't really feel like a pressure from my family I didn't feel like maybe they won't accept, but I, I think more like the community around us and people at school, and you just don't want to be different. Mm. I was a sensitive, very like shy boy. So just the thought of being different was horrible. You know, I just wanted to fit in. So do you, did you ever felt feel, feel like you were having like a competition with your brothers? Were they loving towards you or were they bullying you at any point? No, my brothers were always very sweet to me. They were never mm -hmm. like mean to me at all. And there was no competition. Sometimes I feel like uh, my oldest brother is like this perfect example of a child. He's done very well at school and professionally and married and has kids and been always like this model citizen kind of. So mm -hmm. I think I've always kind of compared myself to him, maybe the rest of our family also, but not in that sense. There was no bullying or I never felt that kind of pressure. I feel very safe at home when I was young and I was very like uh, lucky with that, with my family anyway. And when you decide to come out with your family? I think I was 16 or 17 when it was first like very apparent. I, we didn't speak about it much. My mom maybe asked me sometime like, are you maybe attracted to guys? <laughs> I was like, no, no, what are you talking about? I think this was maybe around 15. If mom is watching, she might be like, no, she rem remembers it wrong. But it was something like that. And then at 16, 17, when I started dating, so that's kind of how I just came out. It was very natural, like introducing my boyfriend and <gasps> talking about like maybe going to a gay club and just keep giving these little hints and I'm dating someone and yeah, it's a guy. And very natural, I think, not like a big uh, ceremonial, like I'm gay. And of course, I was super nervous, but it went really well. So uh, I remember this time I introduced my first boyfriend. So he came over for dinner and my sister was there with, with her now husband, then boyfriend. And my mom, uh, she was telling me later on that she didn't show, show this to me then, but she was really nervous because she knew that my boyfriend was a bit older than I was, mm -hmm. seven years. And uh, she had this image in her head like of uh, this big hairy daddy with leather and stuff like that. Because <laughs> especially at like, that time, she didn't really have that good of an image from you know, the media or anywhere. The representation isn't that good. So that's her fear. And then my boyfriend was very normal, looked kind of 
similar to my age and very nice, like this good boy. I thought she was just like, oh, yes. <laughs> Thank God he's not a drag queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a good dinner and everything went fine and very natural. So when it comes to family, I was very lucky, yeah. Mm. And the love between you and said boyfriend, did it last over the years? Ah, it lasted for a few years, yeah. I moved out of my parents' place to live with him also. So it was very good and uh, actually helped me a lot because uh, when I was younger, going back to like my early teens and when I was still struggling with my sexuality, even though I had it very good, I kind of struggled with my mental health because of that. So I got depressed and my school was going like not very good. I had panic attacks and everything and my mom didn't know what was going on. My family was like, what's going on? And I think this is where it came from, just from like feeling outside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even feel ashamed of it because I know that people, some people have it like much, much harder than me. Mm -hmm. You feel ashamed about being... Like being like having anxiety little, about mm -hmm. it and depressed about it when I was younger. But then again, now I look at this young boy that I was like, sure, it's of course okay to feel not good about these things. So when I met my first boyfriend, I thought that helped me a lot. So I just kind of found myself and found the gay community at the same time and just... I was like, yes, I have a boyfriend, he has a car and he's picking me up with his nice car and we're going somewhere and I felt like such a grown up and, and just haha, all the bullies back at my school. and mm, Got your confidence back and yeah, a safe zone, yeah. safe zone for you to be yourself. Yeah. So you are asking this question. You no, your turn. Why? Your turn. Why my turn? One, two, three. You win, like you have to ask. No! You win. <laughs> you have to ask because you win. You always win. So, I would like to know a little bit more about your sex life. And, okay. <laughs> um, the, the first time that you, you know, did the doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm, God, do I even remember it? It's been so long. <laughs> right? Uh, I think my first time when it was, uh, I think I was 17, so, so this was uh, actually a guy that I dated just briefly. I didn't actually call him my boyfriend, it's just something we saw each other for like a month. Mm -hmm. just, it was just before this first boyfriend I was telling you about, so probably like my first time is when I went to a gay bar. And, then I hook up, hooked up right away <laughs> with this mm -hmm. very handsome uh, blonde dude and um, not very romantic or anything, but that's when it happened. And I was expecting to feel like so different or something, but it was just like, okay, I have a hangover, what just happened? <laughs> but it was good. What anyway, happened last yeah, night? What happened? <laughs> I think something happened, yeah. I think it was okay. <laughs> So yeah. you don't really remember the first experience, but after that, yeah. uh, with your boyfriend, it was more loving kind yes, of thing, yeah? Yes, maybe that's what I think when I think about like my first uh, sexual encounter or like my experience it goes back to my first boyfriend, of course, and that was like very good and nice and where I kind of found myself like sexually, because that's very... You can be very nervous when you do it like the first time. So mm. It's like, oh, gay sex, so, so frightening. What <laughs> What's did going you on? do, right? Can I read, read up somewhere? I don't, I don't think there was Google at the time. Oh, why you have to read when you can watch movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at the expert here, right? I'm sure I did. You're yeah. wasting your time. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I did that. Yeah, it's true. But is that really always the best uh, version of sex? Mm -hmm. though? Uh, I don't know. So, um, your first boyfriend, was he like your ultimate love story? It's hard for me to think about that or like I've never thought about it like that because yeah, that's one of the most important ones for sure. But I think later on, it was actually just a few years ago, I think that was like until now the love of my life, which was uh, this, it had started from a holiday, like a romance. Oh, yeah. so, holiday romance? Yeah, this uh, very handsome young Greek guy when I was in Greece. 
with my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were on holiday and it was like lovely and everything. And then I was single. I was like very curious. I have to open Tinder and just like just look at the apps a little bit. Maybe there's something. And and then I met this guy and we started to talk. And I was like, I'm stuck here with my mom. Or not stuck. We had a lovely time. But you know, if you're with your mom, it's not the first thing you do is go on dates or anything. Mm -hmm. So it was like after a few days, like mom, so. Uh, Okay, there's this guy I've been like talking to on Tinder and I really want to meet him. Do you think it's okay if I go and have a date? Because I felt really bad about like leaving her all alone. And like, she's like, okay, sure. I know, I know she was a bit like worried because she can be sometimes like very like, oh, we're in a weird, yeah, in a weird yeah. country and a new place and where is, she, where is he? And if, I felt like, like such a little kid, I was texting her all the time like, Okay, I'm fine. Maybe in an hour or maybe an hour more and I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, such a sweet guy. Yes, yeah, so we had such a nice day and it was just perfect. We met a few times before I had to go back to Finland and we stayed in contact and there it was. We, we decided to start seeing each other as a long, long distance relationship, which was not easy by the way. We did it for maybe a couple of years. We went back and forth a lot. And I was, I was so in love and oh, it was so nice. And we were both like very into it. It was very expensive for one thing. And <laughs> being apart was very difficult. But then when we met, if it was in Finland or we went to Rome also and, and to Greece, of course, it was always so perfect, just like, like a fairy tale in or something. Heaven. Yes. And, and slowly I started to think that maybe we should think about a future if, if like at some point there's an option that we could live in the same country and just see where our lives are going, if there's a possibility for that. And uh, when we ta started to talk about that, we kind of just found out we didn't have the same goals after all. And I, I told him like, I, it doesn't have to happen now, but like at some point in the near future, like one year, two years, three years, whatever, like, can we plan a little, but I don't know. I think he just kind of got scared or something. And, he, and it was such a disappointment, you know, all the, all the time invested mm. in this very hard, long distance relationship. I was very heartbroken at the time, yeah. We just kind of left things like that, like, okay, we'll just see what happens. But it didn't go well. And then I wasn't maybe the best boyfriend at the time because my mind was kind of elsewhere. And then we just decided to break it up and I was so sad mm. yeah it's been a few years now so I've gotten over it but when I think about it I think that was kind of like it was it mm. you can feel it right? right you can still feel like how how loving you are towards the, that memory yes yes I'm glad that I have like a good memory still of it and I can, can really look back at it fondly and we still message and stuff, and I hope maybe see each other at some points. Sometimes it's sad. And now, are you open to love with somebody new? I think I am. Yeah, I've been a, I've been single now for a little over a year, which is I think the longest time I've been single ever. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> I loved it. I like being single. So now I moved here, this whole new place. If it happens, it'll happen. Yeah. Right. Yes. Have you ab ever date a guy in Vietnam or, or no? You just stay here for one month? Yeah, not yet. I've had a few dates, like just met someone, but not like real dating yet. So mm -hmm. it's so very new to me. But there's a lot of guys. I come from kind of a small town. So it's like, wah, 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 okay, out of guys. <laughs> so it's like, here it's just like endless stream of people. And when you go out, it's just like, ah. ah so many possibilities. Walking on so many possibilities. Yeah, right? and the local guys seem very nice and very, very handsome. And yeah, it's, it's nice. And also because it's just such a, like a melting pot. So there are like people all over the world here. So. so what's your kind of, like, what's your boyfriend type though? Well, this is a joke with some of my friends because uh, I'm one of those people, like the only people in my group of friends who has like the widest range of tasting guys ever. So whenever I have like a new boyfriend, they're like, oh, this is surprising and totally different from the last one. And so I don't really have like a type, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like looks or age or something. So 
very open to all kinds of guys, but I like a guy with a sense of adventure, but still grounded in some ways. Someone who's confident and loving. You know, these basic mm -hmm. things, yeah. Emotionally smart. Yes, that's actually very mm. important to me, yeah. That's something I always look for. Yes. Somebody so needs to be emotionally smart. So important, yeah. I don't actually care if you're smart, like in other ways. Mm. I think emotional smartness is like the most important thing. Yeah, mm. that's what I look for. You are the next question. Why are you Why me? Shy? Why me? He's handsome me? and you are shy to ask him questions. No, because th that kind of question is like your your part. Or you have like roles for different <laughs> questions. <laughs> Not really, but oh! Oh! So basically you want to know if he is the the big spoon or the small spoon. <laughs> the top or the bottom, yeah, I guess. Yeah, the top or the <laughs> yeah. bottom. Um, wow, wow. <laughs> You're going straight for it. Like me, us <laughs> Yeah, sure. it, it is hot here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, for me, uh, I hope my mom is not watching this. <laughs> for me, it's more about the guy, mm -hmm. and it changes like every time. So I don't know. Yeah, it changes. Yeah. Just like in friendships, you have different mm. dynamics. So, but it's hard because you have this certain feeling about someone, then you hope that they have like this same one because it can clash, and then it's just mm. like. Someone just recently, recently told me, like, uh, baby, two bottoms don't make a top. So it's like, <laughs> two <laughs> bottoms don't make a top. Yeah, so it's just kind of have to, you have to be aligned. And so. mm. I know that you just stay here for a short, short time. Yeah. But can you compare the LGBT community in Vietnam and your country? Of course, I haven't seen much, but here it seems, uh, okay, it seems like relatively small for the size of the city, but it's very alive and it's very fun. For my hometown back in Finland, it's, it's like almost non-existent because it's so small. We usually go to Helsinki, which is the capital and not too far away from where I used to live. So that has a little bit of a bigger scene. No matter if it's like a different continent or something, it, it's always there's something similar going on. You can kind of feel the vibe, you feel mm -hmm. at home. So of course there are differences with this, but you know, when, when I went to the bar, when, went to a bar here the first time and I met some guys, I'm like, ah, yeah, this is like oh. familiar territory, yes, very nice, so. So what is your plan in the near future in Vietnam? I have no plans to like leave anytime soon so mm -hmm. yeah I just want to get to know the place want to get to know the language get to know the people maybe meet some guys mm -hmm. yeah date some more and also because now I'm in Asia I want to travel and see the places that are near here because that's new for me and such a good opportunity also just to go and see the like the LGBT community in other countries near here so do, do you have any message to share with the LGBT community for me, like we were talking about community and also family, which is very important to me. If some uh, young kid is feeling alone or like, like an outcast, and if you have trouble with your family, I think there can always be like a chosen family for you and you can find a community and you can find the people, you can find the safety in other people. For me, I was lucky it was my family and I've kind of extended my family to people in the LGBT community too but yeah that's my message to everyone like find your family and that's where your strength is mm, find your family find your support right yes indeed so before we end the show I need to give you something special from me and Duan oh really oh thank you <laughs> thanks that's so nice thank you so much for being on our show today thank you for having me it was a pleasure mm -hmm. Thanks for coming to our show and share your story. Thank you. Thank you. Check out our show on YouTube channel MCV Media and come out LGBT Vietnam. Don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channels for more awesome videos. Now we have to say goodbye and see you later. Bye.